tell me uh tell me about where we are and tell me what it what this does so we're currently in uh, Coburg on Coburg Brook otherwise known as Coburg Creek and we're at the Lamprey Weir here um, and the Lamprey Weir is an effective way of stopping lamprey from entering upstream and spawning um, and for those of you that don't know sea lamprey are an invasive species uh, they were brought into the Great Lakes through ballast water uh, they have been a nuisance for our fisheries. They are one of the main reasons why lake trout populations have collapsed and that has a, um, a catastrophic impact on the predator species in the Great Lakes and then has a, a whole, um, whole effect that happens as well. Uh, so what we do here is we trap the lamprey and previously we used to do a mark recapture. So we would tag the fish, we would release them in Peace Park, and we would see how many come back. And that was to get a better population density of how many lamprey are in the Great Lakes. Um, this year we're not doing that anymore, so we're just euthanizing them because there's no need to do those estimations. How long have you been doing this for? Um, checking them, cleaning them, and tell, tell us the numbers if you can. It was, it was amazing, the numbers. Yeah, sure. So uh, personally, I've been doing this for seven years now, um, but the trap has been installed since the early 70s um, when they dis dis um, discover that there was the invasive species. Um, and on average, uh, the total number that we get in a season is between 250 and 300. Uh, last year, however, we hit record high numbers and we got 1,300 lamprey over the season. And the season is from the beginning of April till the middle of middle or end of July. Uh, and the reason there was that influx is because during COVID uh, and the lockdown, the Department of Fisheries and Oceans weren't able to go out and apply lamprecide or run some of these traps. So the lamprey were able to get upstream and spawn and then three years later, they hatched and they came back and they were ready to spawn themselves. So it was a big boom. What are, and as I say, as a non-fisherman, what are lamprey? So lamprey um, are a fish species that look like an eel, but they are a fish. Um, they have gills along the side, but they're, the thing that's really special about lamprey is they have that circular suction mouth with rows of teeth and then they have a rappling tongue or a grasping tongue sorry and that tongue essentially is grasping on the fish and creating a hole on the side of them so that they can eat and feast on the on the fish themselves there's traps like this uh along like across lake ontario yes yeah so um we have a functioning trap here that we check daily like i had mentioned um, the Toronto Region uh, and Conservation Authority also works with DFO uh, on the same thing and they have two traps in Humber and they have one in Duffins um, and then there are other ones that aren't functional. So there's one in Graham Creek which is in our watershed. Um, there is one in Shelter Valley which is just outside of our watershed and there's a, a few other ones as well. Are we winning the war? Yes, I, I would say we are winning the war. Um, before the pandemic with the closure and the, and the lockdowns, um, there was a 90% reduction in the population from pre-treatment to post-treatment. So it's, it's beneficial to have these resources and put all of these funds towards uh, programs like this. This is related to a project that's funded by the Great Lakes Fisheries Commission looking at lamprey trap and trying to optimize the design of the trap to be used more for beyond just monitoring and to try to optimize the trapping capacity of the trap. So we're looking at understanding the hydrodynamics at trap entrance and relate this to behavior of lamprey. So we're trying to relate what's happening in the water to what the lampreys are doing. 
without going into scientific detail, can you explain last night how it turned green, so to speak, or the... So we're using an optical method to capture what's happening under the water. So using a laser, this light, it just reflects off whatever is floating in the water. So the particles in the water and we take a picture or a video and the particles are moving at a certain speed and we can calculate that speed by looking at with the laser sheet. So the laser allows us to take a slice through the flow. So think about like you have a cake, you're taking a slice so you can see all the layers of the cake. That's what we're doing, but we're looking out, the particles are moving through that layer. And I take it all to more to make a better trap. Exactly. And understanding, I mean, this is fundamental work. We're not at redesigning the trap yet, but what we're trying to do is our lamprey respond to eddies in the flow. Tell me what you're doing here for the month or two months? Uh, we're here for about two months. So what we're doing here is trying to investigate how lamprey respond to different flow patterns created by uh, various trap types. So we have a mesh face trap and a solid face trap. And we are looking to see if one or the other influences lamprey behavior better and possibly lamprey entrance rates better. Tell me how it's going so far. Um, it's going all right so far. We've got our lamprey tagged and in the water. Um, and we're just kind of waiting till night. Lamprey are nocturnal, so we come back at night, release them. We've caught um, one of our 12 tagged lamprey that we released yesterday. And we're obviously hoping to catch more. What does the tags do? Like, so the tags are basically like the, the tags that people put in their dogs, like the identification chips. And so they're a little piece of wire wrapped around like a microchip. And the microchip will feed a number once it's put under an electric current. And so that allows us to ID which sea lamprey are our sea lamprey when we release them and um, and um, like and what day they got there and stuff like that. How does that help in terms of uh, research? Um, so now we know specifically which lampreys um, are making their way upstream. So we want to be able to take a look at, you know, the sex, the weight, the size, the length, how long it took a lamprey to move upstream. And also with the antenna system that we've set up around the fishway, it will allow us to see how long they've spent searching around the front of the trap. Um, if they entered the trap, if they stayed in the trap, or if they left the trap, uh, that sort of fun information. Are lamprey bad? Um, lamprey are bad in the Great Lakes. Lamprey are not bad in the oceans where they belong. They're a critical a part of the ecosystem in the Atlantic Pacific Ocean. But in the Great Lakes, sea lampreys specifically are not good for our fish. But there are a number of different lampreys that are native to this region and are actually very beneficial to the environment. Tell us, I guess, um, the history, of, if, if you know, again, yeah. if, tell us the history of the lamprey in the Great Lakes. So the lamprey, there's a little bit of debate on this about whether the lamprey had somehow made their way into Lake Ontario through the St. Lawrence Seaway through like a freak flooding event or whether they kind of lived in the great in Lake Ontario for a very long time. But um, the consensus is that after we completed the Welland Canal in the 1920s, they made their way through the rest of the Great Lakes and spread like wildfire. And you may remember there was a big fisheries collapse in the Great Lakes in like the mid 1900s, like the 60s, 70s, 80s. And that was due in part to the lamprey just thriving because there there's not really any predators for the lamprey in the Great Lakes. What you said to me this morning was interesting how uh... I don't know whether the right word is they could be conceived as a, or contrived as a delicacy with the prince. Uh, yeah. The so the Great Lakes Fishery Commission, which funds this project, uh, really fun organization. They are a 
intergovernmental agency between the U.S. and Canadian government focused on the Great Lakes health and fishery, and sea lamprey is a big portion of what they do there. Um, in England, they really enjoy the taste of sea lamprey, I believe, in terms of um, eel pies. And so I believe that they sent Charles and his crew um, a bunch of lamprey for when he was coronated in order to have eel pie so they don't have to go through the delicacy of the sea sea lamprey because they want to keep those alive. They're endangered, in fact, in the oceans or at risk in the oceans, and here they're a nuisance. So we can send them the ones we don't want and they can keep the ones they do want alive and healthy. And uh, one of the last questions is, uh, when you were explaining, when you were showing uh, the eggs, tell how many are in a, if I said sack, like? Um, so a lamprey will basically fill up the entire body, a female lamprey will fill up the entire body cavity with eggs. So one lamprey can produce anywhere from 1,000 to 10,000 baby lamprey if the eggs are, um, are um, fertilized properly and they live to adulthood. Safe to say it's, and tell us, because there might be some, maybe I'm the only one that doesn't know, but tell us how they, uh, their teeth work and... Um, so the teeth, the lamprey creates almost like a suction cup. So it uh, speeds very, it swims very fast out of fish, attaches on, and then pushes in with a little hole at the top of his head, which pushes the air out. And that creates almost a suction cup, kind of like a toilet plunger when you stick it onto a wall. And then from there, they have these little teeth in their mouth that rasp back and forth and will take all the scales and the skin off before they drink the blood out of the lamprey. Critical what you're doing in terms of uh, finding out more research? Um, I like to think it's critical, at least. Um, we're hoping to help create better traps um, in order to catch more lamprey before they're able to move upstream to spawn. And with these traps, we're able to reduce the amount of lampreyside we have to use in these waterways um, because we can either A, reduce the amount that are able to spawn, or we can limit the streams in which these lamprey are able to spawn in. So you, instead of having to treat three streams, you can put a trap in a stream, lamprey are stuck back, they move to a different stream, and so now you only have to treat one stream instead of three. And that'll be a little bit better for our native lampreys. Stick to things. And so they have a little hole on the top of their head that allows them to create almost like a vacuum so the air gets sucked out through that hole and they stick. And so you can see Pulling it just drags her up the top. And so you gotta break the seal. And so she will now go into our anesthetic bucket. measure her so she is 457 millimeters and we will put her in our oh shoot we gotta turn the scale on she will now go into our scale so 260 grams 259 grams Oh, yes. So the body depth is 32 millimeters. Sounds good. So this one is four sixty two.
you show me how he does that again? Yep. So they just wiggle. They try to bite, realize that they, oh, he's latched on. Oh, I'm latched on. And then he just leaves a heggy. Yeah, he is. Oh, that was a sheep. Let me know what you need to say.